Uh, Eric Dungey, Eric, always uh, always good to chat. We, we need our like uh, our weekly uh, the neck update. Ooh, no no bandage today. There we go. No, you're, no, you're improving. It, yeah, you see the scar, though. The scar's coming in. It's going to be a nice little scar for the rest of my life here. Always a reminder. So thanks, Xavier. Uh, th- there we go. There we go. So yeah, you'll 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 have that going on. I, I guess you could get like the the scar cream and stuff to fade it, but uh, I, I think you just need to let people know. Let let people know what, what it's all about. You, you'll have a story for the rest of the time, right? Scar face and more like scar neck. You know, that's what they're you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the weird sequel that nobody knew they uh, nobody knew they needed. Exactly. All right, so. We got the Friday night game coming up. Man, you, you played in some doozies on Friday night uh, during your career. Obviously, the, the Clemson game was a Friday night. Um, I, b- I believe uh, the Lamar Jackson game when you guys uh, dueled, when he jumped over a guy, was uh, on Friday night. What what are these Friday games like to to be a part of? When It, it just feels like the, the vibe in the building's a, a little bit different than what we get on a Saturday. Honestly, I loved Friday night games. Those were, uh, those were some of my favorite. Kind of bring, brings it back to high school. You know, there was nothing better than Friday night lights and, um, you know, nothing really compares to playing on Saturday, but it, it's fun. You know, you got the, the kids coming in from after school. You know, people are looking forward to it. It. Um, and honestly, it's just like, I, I didn't hate practice, but I, I wanted to play the game. You know, I, I'm now we're talking about practice, man. I wanted to play and I hated the anticipation leading up to it. So it was, it was a better way to just, you know, get to the game quicker. Um, and I think during the, the week of prep too, like it was a lot simpler, you know, we were just kind of installing and we were going back to the basics and, um, there was a lot of fun things that could happen on Friday night, just making sure that the guys were healthy, but the coach always took care of our legs and it wasn't really hard practices. It was just about like mental preparation. And usually when you're fresh, you're able to play, uh, play a lot quicker and play a lot better. So, um, I, I really enjoyed Friday night games and I think, uh, Syracuse, you know, they just came off of, you know, quite a, well, quite a long break, so I think they're going to be more than fresh. So, yeah, they they had the bye last week, as did Stanford uh, too. So uh, both teams coming off uh, a bye last week. Stanford, uh, they they should be, I, I believe, literally in the air right now. They're flying uh, today out here because of the uh, the long travel going uh, coast to coast. You know, you look at these Friday games, and I, I guess it can throw you off, right? If you if your team never does it. Because, you know, the days are off, everything's a little off. Syracuse plays this game literally every year, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think you had one every year uh, during your career. The fact that, you know, you're used to it, you, you know you have one coming, it, how, how much does that help that it's not like, oh, this is some weird thing? Like, no, this is a an annual thing you guys do. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, you're playing on a Sunday, then you got Thursday night football, and you got, you know, what, three days to prepare. Yeah. This is, I mean, you still have, you know, all those times to recover, to get ready, and especially with the bye week. Um, I don't think it's going to be really any different for these guys. I'm sure they're actually really excited for it. Um, and, you know, yeah. as, as great as the bye week is, you get into a rhythm, you get into, you know, some habits, and then the bye week comes, and everything kind of gets thrown off. You're like, oh, I want to go out and play, and you're just kind of waiting and waiting until the next game. So I'm sure they're they're ready to go, and they've really proven that themselves now and i'm i mean it's exciting though that that bye week they were probably able to implement some new uh, wrinkles on offense and get the defense right and you know it's it's going to be fun i was just looking at stanford it looks like they have a pretty solid run defense um they're, they're pretty stout there however they they are uh, pretty you know liable in the, in the back end so i think kyle mccord could have another 300 350 maybe a 400 yard passing game against stanford um you know i don't think uh, their dbs can really hang with the ronde and trevor and some of these guys and then especially the you know we have amari hatcher and uh you know z haynes and these guys that haven't really even broken the scene yet um, so it's like, you know, kind of holding them in the holster right now. And, um, then the Quint Allen, I don't know if we're going to see uh, too much of him, you know, just because of, uh, you know, their, their liabilities on defense, uh, for Stanford, but during the end of the game, hopefully we can get up big and then LaQuint can get a, uh, get his hundred yards. Cause you know, me number one LaQuint fan. So. You know, I think it's been interesting here with LaQuint because, you know, last year obviously was such a different uh, style of team for 8 million reasons. But, you know, it was a running-based offense. You had Garrett Schrader and the whole thing. It was established the run early, right? And that kind of determined how it went. We thought, based on what Fran said, you know, toughness, liking LaQuint, Jersey guy, the whole thing, it, it would lead that way. It's been the opposite, right? Like McCord's coming out and flinging it, and then you've had LaQuint be the hammer in the fourth quarter. What do you like about the, the way that's developed this year with, you know, McCord prolific, and then LaQuint, instead of setting the tone, he, he's more the guy that closes things out. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, when you got Kyle McCord clipping at the rate he's clipping at, I mean, why change? Um, and then you can just bring LaQuint in at the end of the game and just ice him out 
that's kind of the best way to do it there. From a, from a standpoint, from a quarterback, that's what you want to do. You know, I'm going to throw the ball around for three quarters, you know, impose our will on you. And then the receivers are happy. And then the fourth quarter, here you go, LaQuint, here's, a, here's, here's some food, go eat, get those hard-earned yards. Um, and it's just, I think that's the best way to play it. Obviously, nothing's going to go perfect. Some days you're going to have to rely on the run a little more. Um, and obviously, the run opens up the pass. But until they can stop the pass, Make them stop it. So um, I'm re- I'm just really excited for this team, and I think there's a lot of hype. You're saying that the Holy Cross game's already sold out, so it's just yep. it's great to see that the Syracuse community is really getting behind Coach Brown, behind Kyle McCord, behind these guys. And um, again, we we have a we have all the opportunity in the world right now, um, and and things are getting really excited up in that state. Yeah, you know the the hype here is it's building as you can tell, and you know these games on Friday are so interesting, right? Because that's when, like everybody else in the college football world, you, you're doing your meetings, you're getting ready for Saturday, you're you're in the hotel, you you pop on the game. I think Illinois and Nebraska are also playing on Friday on Fox, but you know people will be watching Syracuse play this game, and you, you look at Vegas, Syracuse is between an eight and ten, eleven point favorite, depending what you're looking. So they're expected to win the game and convincingly. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the opportunity here to like? Let let the world know, right? Like let let people know what Syracuse football is all about with, with this game on Friday night. Definitely, all eyes are going to be on Syracuse, and everyone's just they're, they're curious. I think curiosity is you know the biggest word for it is because in the past they look at Syracuse and they're like, oh yeah, they started strong last year, and look how that that ended up or you know there's just a bunch of different things in it but I, it's a different team it is a f- full-on different team different coaching and it's a different atmosphere as well so the product of Syracuse football has entirely changed um, and now it's Friday or on Friday night that's their time to go out and show everybody else and show the committee and everybody who's doing the top 25 votes as well like hey we are here to stay we belong here and you know not even top 25 but you know whether it be top 15 and then work our way up um, the, the only thing that might nip Syracuse in the bud this season is just the strength of schedule. It's not like what it's been in the past. However, when you're you know winning convincingly against these teams, especially in ACC play, then that is where you make your name. So um, as far as a uh, as this game just kind of being you know winning convincingly, they could they could really make a name for themselves, especially if they you know blow Stanford out of the water and send them back on a long long trip back to the West Coast. Yeah, I imagine like a flight like that, if you lose, can't be very much fun, right, Eric? <laughs> Having to go all the way back across the country uh, over the course of the night, right? Yeah, no, I've done that flight uh, too many a time. So uh, it's not a fun flight, especially uh, if, you, if you do lose, good luck. So, You know, you mentioned the rankings, and, and Fran brought this up earlier on, on Orange Nation. He, he said basically the way he views it, and, you know, he's coming from Georgia, um, like, are, are you number one? No. All right, then, like, quit worrying about it. But – the same, I, I get how that works within the team, right? But, like, we know how it is here in Syracuse. Like, if they can somehow pop a number next to their name here in the next few weeks, like, that that means something, even if, like, Fran within the team's using it a different way, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, being ranked, that's such a great feeling. And you just want to get ranked higher and higher. And, yeah, if you're not number one, then, you know, you got some work to do. But at the same time, at this point, if you're you know top eleven, granted the group of five is going to get that twelve spot. Then if you're top eleven, then that's a that's a great number to have by your name. And um, I think you know that's what they got to shoot for right now. And then just you know give themselves a chance, give themselves a chance to prove themselves um, when it gets to the end of the year. And then it doesn't matter what the uh, the numbers are; they'll they'll work themselves out in the wash. But um, I do think having some some rankings, it's it's good for the fan base as well. And you know other teams are going to start to notice you, and it's also good for recruits. So you got to think about the future here. Um, you know, every recruit wants to go to a top 25 program, so why not Syracuse? Yeah, and heck, when you are ranked, you know how highlights go during, you know, halftime shows and stuff. You're in a ranked game. You're the team that gets shown, and, like, people get to see you. Mm-hmm. You know, I think back to 2018, right, Eric? You guys peaked at, what was it, 13 or 12 that year before the, the Notre Dame game. Like, and you said it, like, top, top 11, top 12. Like, how different would that have been, do you think? Yeah. I was thinking you guys about- were like, man, right, right there. Yeah, it would have been a lot different, especially, I mean, you, you want to go back and, you know, the fourth down conversion at Clemson or the legal man downfield, where are they downfield? I don't know. But we won that game, then we're definitely top 10 and we're, we're you know, ACC. There's a lot of what ifs that could have happened, you know, even the Notre Dame game and um, Pittsburgh. And it's just like, 
thinking back, like we did finish 13, but our strength of schedule was incredibly hard. I mean, the ACC was mm -hmm. really pumping at that point. Um, so I just, it was unfortunate. I wish they would have had the, the bigger playoff then because I think we could have made a push for it. But um, at this point, you know, the past is the past and now is the future. And, you know, they got to they gotta make the most out of this. This is an incredible opportunity and you got to maximize it because you never know how long it's going to stay. We know college football, it's forever changing. You know, maybe they go to six next year. Maybe they just go to four. Maybe they expand it even more but why not take advantage of uh, the opportunity in front of ourselves? It, it seems like it, it's such a intriguing target, right, for these teams this year to, you know, it, when, it, when it was four or two going back to the BCS day, like, you could say it, but realistically very few teams actually had a chance once we got, you know, more than a month in, into the season. The fact that so many teams can, like, mm -hmm. legit target this now, Eric, feels like it, it, it's such an amazing, like, apple out there to be like, Okay, this, this is like a real thing. Like, this is not just pie in the sky. It's a, a real thing for a bunch of teams to target right Definitely. now. Definitely, and it's competition. I mean, competition will, will prevail always, and that's what people want to see. They want to see competitive college football, um, and that's why college football has been so great is because it had that competitive aspect before NIL, and now NIL's come through, and they're like, okay, well, you know, all of Alabama or people who are going to you know, be paying their players the most, they're going to be dominant, but now it's opened it up, and these teams have a chance. So competition is back, and that's what we really want to see from you know an athlete from a coaching stamp base and then also a fan base as well um, because that's really what it is it's an entertainment and you're entertaining the fans and um, people want to see that they don't want to see just you know the Alabamas or the Clemsons win every single year they want to see the underdog and now underdog has a chance to go toe to toe with them so all right I was trying to explain to Kyle McCord yesterday uh, what the student section is like in these Friday night games, Eric, when they have, uh, what, what's the, I, I don't know what the proper terminology is here. They, they have enough, uh, they have ample preparation time uh, to get ready to uh, take in these Friday night games. What, what was it like for you watching your fellow students uh, support you guys on these Friday night games? I mean, it was, I just, I, I miss playing in the dome so much. I just, it wasn't even the students, it was everybody. I mean, everybody was, you know, juiced up, pumped up, whether it be, you know, 15,000 people, 20,000 people, it sounded like there was 100,000 in there. And then when we were able to fill it, it was incredible. But I think our students, they, they have so much fun. Um, and it's just one of those experiences. I just remember even being a student, going to the uh, Syracuse versus Duke game when uh, Syracuse came down, mm -hmm. bank shot to win it. I mean, it's one of those things that you remember. And I'm sure, you know, students remember, you know, us beating Clemson and you make memories there. And again, they'll probably have their ample amount of preparation, um, as, mm -hmm. as we're saying it. And it's just going to make it even more and more fun for them. And, you know, you got an ACC opponent coming in first ACC game of Stanford and Syracuse. So it's exciting. And hopefully we can uh, start the, that series one and oh going forward. So. Eventually, I'll remember this is a conference game. It hasn't quite uh, <laughs> hasn't quite locked in yet. That's Syracuse and Stanford is a, a league matchup. Hi, right, Eric. Uh, good to chat as always. Uh, enjoy the game. We'll we'll, we'll talk again uh, next Friday. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian.